Okay, we do begin with a little breaking political news. Republican Congressman Peter King has just announced that he will not run for re-election. Joining us now to talk about this and more, we have Michael Smirconish, a CNN political commentator and host of CNN Smirconish. So, Michael, Peter King, I mean, what he's a he's a you know fixture in Congress. And he says here in his statement, um, I've decided not to be a candidate for re-election. After 28 years of spending four days a week in Washington, D.C., it is time to end the weekly commute and be home in Seaford. You know, this he's he's just one of kind of a host of Republicans who have decided to call it quits. He is. And of course, you wonder, is it attributable to the climate? Is it attributable to what's coming in 2020? His response is to say that has none of it to do in terms of an explanation. He's been at it for a long, long time. He's 75. He wants to stay at home. Uh, and he made clear in that statement that he will vote against the impeachment of President Trump and will be supporting his reelection. I guess, Allison, less anyone should speculate that he's had enough with the direction of the GOP. Yeah, and one case is one case. But when you look at the overall numbers, what you do see is a rather high amount a high number of Republicans, including Republicans in senior positions, leaving. And generally speaking, and, and Peter King's example might be different, but generally speaking, you don't quit if you think you're going to end up in the majority in a year, generally speaking. But Peter King's case might be different. Michael, let's switch gears to 2020 and the Democrats. I see, sorry, did you want to weigh in there? No, no, I was going to agree with, with what you say. I mean, I think the numbers 18 or 19 who are in the House right now, Republicans who are deciding they're going to get out. Um, CNN's got a, a really interesting town hall tonight with former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, he, he will answer questions on a range of subjects. Obviously, one of the new subjects he's dealing with is the entry, perhaps, of former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg into the race. Our Dana Bash caught up with the Vice President and asked him about it. Listen. I think he should jump in the race. I mean, I, he's a good guy. Uh, he's done a lot of good, and uh, let's see what happens. And the notion that the current field is not well, the current uh, prepared to, be, to beat Donald Trump, which is what's motivating him, that's a, with, what his top advisor Well, I've noticed that every single poll is run. I beat him like a drum, as I said. There's in, in states in the South, and states in the Midwest, and states around the world. So, look, I, 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 look uh, if he wants to run, he should just get in and run. You're not taking it personally? No, 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 no. no. Again, we're going to hear much more from the former vice president tonight. Michael, what do you think he needs to do on that stage and in the next few days? I keep thinking that Bloomberg's entry increases the odds that this is going to go on for a while. I mean, Joe Biden is not at the top of the heap right now in Iowa, probably, or New Hampshire. He's running very strong, according to the polls, in Nevada and especially in South Carolina. And then Michael Bloomberg gets in. You know that Super Tuesday is going to be different this year because both California and Texas have moved their dates forward. So March the 3rd is a very important day. Now Bloomberg is in, presumably spending a lot of money. And given the proportionate nature of the way that Democratic candidates are, are selecting their nominee, I just think this could go on and the field won't get winnowed like the Republican field did in 2016. Hmm. As you know, Mayor Pete Buttigieg has had a bit of a surge in polls lately. And Senator Amy Klobuchar, another presidential candidate, of course, um, sees something, I think, interesting. Uh, she framed it in an interesting way that we hadn't heard before. Here's what she said about Pete Buttigieg versus some of the women, the female candidates. Of the women on the stage, I'm focusing here on my fellow women senators of Senator Harris, Senator Warren, and myself. Do I think that we would be standing on that stage if we had the experience that he had? No, I don't. Maybe we're held to a different standard. I don't know, Michael. I hadn't thought of it that way. But if they were, if they were small town mayors, virtually, instead of sitting senators with their experience, would they be getting all of this attention? I mean, of course, it's unknowable, but I just thought it was interesting to hear her say that. What do you hear? It is unknowable. My hunch is there's truth in what she says. Uh, now, part of his appeal also is in that newness, right? People who are looking for something completely different than what's going on in Washington today, he's a very appealing candidate. But I've long believed, gender aside, that sooner or later people are going to say, wait a minute, we like him, we like his credentials, he really seems like an up-and-comer, but is it too big of a leap to go from being the mayor of South Bend to be president of the United States. Although, Allison, I'm reminded that in 2008, I remember people who said, wait a minute, he's only a junior senator. 
from the state of Illinois. Then again, Barack Obama was in the U.S. Senate and not a relatively small town mayor. Michael Smirconish, great to have you on this morning. Thanks so much for being with us.